okay sorry all this time i was talking mute actually so uh let me uh help you with that one more time so those who are new today the yesterday's session was uploaded to the youtube channel of durga soft you can go there and view there as part of the playlist okay yesterday only the class has been started as a as the demo class i mean to say okay so today uh uh, uh yesterday we are also seeing the tutor introduction general introduction and the course introduction okay so as per tutor introduction i introduce myself general introduction means i have uh shown you how what are the prerequisites that are needed right the course introduction means uh what are the different concepts that need to be that that we we are going to learn as part of this course we have seen right now uh and also we have seen the presentation of the projects there are seven different projects that we are going to do as part of this course right so i have also shown you uh yesterday's class all the all were all the projects were the real time projects how the applications how the log collection will be happening how the applications are deployed how the automation will be happening how the monitoring will be happening all these things uh how the pipelines have been created as part of the jenkins all these things we are we have as part of our projects okay now this is going to be our agenda today that is what is devops what is an application what is sdlc process what is server what is physical server what is docker and kubernetes where does docker and kubernetes kubernetes fits in software release process okay if you face any problem in the middle let me know whether it might be the problem with uh, the screen or whether it might be the problem with my voice okay anything if you face any problem please let me know so that i can rectify that okay i hope i am audible to everyone that are present in the meeting if yes please put something in chat so that i can able to understand that you are not i am audible to you okay hey audible yes thank you thank you banu yeah so this is going to be our agenda today okay so what is devops what is devops devops is a combination of development as well as operations okay devops is a combination of development and operations development in devops it does not mean the application development okay development in devops it does not mean the application development it means that you need to develop some scripts which are used to perform automation it might be the python script it might be the shell script it might be the groovy script whatever it it might be the terraform code or whatever the scripts it might be okay so you need to create those scripts to perform some automation that we regularly do manually you need to automate that using the scripts that comes under development in devops and you also need to know you also need to know application functionality as part of the development is you you know need of knowing that how to write a code for that application but yeah you need to know functionality of that application as part of this devops actually development of of devops okay now the next is the operations what are operations operation means maintenance okay maintaining the servers maintaining the applications deployed maintaining the different configurations of that particular server continuously releasing the new new applications that means updated applications to the servers so maintenance comes under operations so ultimately the devops is a combination of development and operations development means development in devops means you need to develop some scripts to automate the process and operations in devops means it's a maintenance each and every aspect of devops can be achieved with multiple tools suppose let's take monitoring for monitoring we have multiple tools for devops we have grafana we have loki we have datadog we have different types of tools for monitoring like let's say let's say containerization 
we have docker we have container d we have rocket okay so like this we we each and every aspect of devops uh, can have multiple tools out of those tools we are mainly focusing on containerization what are the different aspects we are going to focus on containerization okay containerization container orchestration and uh, monitoring and we are also going to focus on release okay with the help of jenkins okay so these are the four different aspects that we are going to mainly focus on as part of this course because what are the different tools that comes that we are learning comes under the under these aspects right so as part of the this course we are going to see docker kubernetes and jenkins we we already know that okay this is devops and uh, that's the thing okay the next part you need to know what is an application application is it's nothing but a website or anything that you people will be interacting with suppose you and uh, we uh, you will be entering through any website like redbuzz.in or amazon.in see that these are all the applications you already know but yeah now that's an application now how these applications are developed applications are developed uh, using sdlc process as of now there are many processes people using uh, agile process but yeah that's fine applications previously they used to develop using sdlc process as part of this process we will be having six different phases right requirement phase design phase development phase testing phase deployment phase maintenance phase okay so in the analysis phase in order to develop an application okay so people will be collecting the requirements what are all the required things to develop this application they will be calculating that all these things normally number of resources needed what are the different types of servers needed okay what are the requirements that is needed to develop a particular application that is done in the analysis or the requirement phase once the requirements are been collected from the from the client or uh, from the client then then the next phase in the application sdlc process is going to be a design phase okay so what is the design phase here what is the design phase the application will be designed there will be a ui ux designer will be there and the system design people will be there okay so the application will be designed this is what my page should look like our login screen the username and password should be at the top of the screen right side of the screen so all this kind of design will be will be done as part of the design phase and there there is something like system design some part of system design is also done as part of the design phase okay so once the design of the application got completed the design will be shared with the developer and developer in the development phase will be choosing one programming language and developing that design with that programming language it might be the java it might be the python it might be the node js it might be the dot net okay whatever the programming language that is feasible for them they will be choosing that programming language and develop the software in the development phase once the development of software got completed in the development phase people developers also write unit test cases okay so test cases also some part of unit testing unit testing will also done by developers actually okay so they are going to use a a tools called okay j unit power mock mockito as part of the java so i and complete the testing unit testing as part of the development phase itself and once the develop ping of our application got completed and the unit test cases are been written by developers then your software will be moving to developer software will be moved to testing phase okay in the testing phase there are different types of testing that will be done on your software on your developer software regression testing okay so our performance testing if more number of people are accessing your application how your application behaves so such kind of testing will be happening as part of this testing phase once the testing phase has been completed your application is going to be deployed in using deployment phase in this deployment phase your application will be deployed on the servers okay 
on the servers so that it will be available to everyone in the world so where our docker and kubernetes fits our docker and kubernetes fits in the deployment phase using docker and kubernetes we are going to containerize our applications and deploy those applications on the servers in the as part of the deployment phase so this is what our docker this is where our docker and kubernetes comes into picture as part of the deployment phase once the deployment of the application got completed then it comes to the maintenance phase you need to regularly maintain the application that means you need to regularly check whether the application is properly running and you need to regularly update the application whenever the new version of the application is being released by the developers you need to update that all that comes under maintenance phase so if the main phase for us is a deployment phase where our docker and kubernetes comes into picture and we are going to deploy our applications using docker and kubernetes okay so this is comes under deployment phase okay this is going to be your sdlc process okay so in order to develop an application and deploy an application on the servers actually so the next thing what is a server so a server is nothing but a, a physical component okay see on which your application is going to be placed your application is going to be deployed so that the application which you have created will be accessible to everyone in the world actually suppose there is an amazon.in application so that application how you are able to access from your browsers okay because that is placed on a server so if you place on a see if the application is there on your laptop then how how the people will be able to access your application in order to in order to make the application accessible to everyone in the world you need to place on a server okay there are two types of servers here also there are physical servers and the virtual servers there are physical servers and the virtual servers so where to place our application that's what the question okay what i have told you we need to place our application on the servers so that our application will be accessible to everyone in the world so and i've also told you i've also told you there are two types of servers physical server and the virtual servers so where to place whether to place your applications on the physical server whether to place our applications on the virtual servers where to place our application let's see let's see one by one actually okay now now let's move further okay that's a server where we need to place our application so that people will be able to access our applications from anywhere in the world until and unless you do not block them okay so that's a server okay the next where does docker and kubernetes fits in sdlc process docker and kubernetes fits as part of the deployment phase which we have discussed in the earlier slide uh, uh, right so as part of the sdlc process now deploying applications on the physical servers now let me go to the diagram okay now what happens if you deploy your applications on the physical servers let's see let me open my paint okay so that it will be understandable for you one second so okay now let me take this okay so let me write that one here deploying the i have told you there are two types of servers one is physical server and the second one is virtual server right so now let's see what happens if you deploy your applications directly on the physical servers okay deploying deploying applications on physical servers okay so now let me put something like this so what what we are going to have it here is uh, we are going to draw a diagram one second let me this one take this one suppose this is going to be your physical server let me decrease this one to this place 
this is going to be your physical server let let's think this is going to be a physical server where your applications are being placed placed okay now physical physical server this physical server this physical server let's think this physical server will be having some resources okay each and every server will be having some resources what are resources resources means cpu and memory your laptop is a physical server on which you are installing your applications right so your laptop it's a server it's a physical server right so let your laptop will be having some cpu and memory right so like that server physical server will also be having some resources so that are let me take suppose this physical server has 10 gb memory memory and 10 cpus 10 cpus okay we have a physical server with 10 gb memory and 10 cpus now i want to deploy an application on this physical servers suppose let me have that one here okay this is the application i have deployed on this physical server what is the application name I want to give? I want to give the application name as app1, okay? APP1, something like that, okay? Now, okay, I have deployed, it is properly running and everything is working fine. Now, what are the disadvantages that we have if we directly deploy our applications on the physical servers? Let's see that one by one, okay? So let me put something like this here. Uh, disadvantages of deploying applications on physical servers. Okay, what are the different disadvantages? that we have in deploying applications on physical servers let me let us discuss that first disadvantage suppose let's 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 assume <clears throat> here yeah let me do this first okay here we have application number one and our application only uses only uses let me take one gb of memory and one cpu okay only uses one gb of memory and one cpu here okay my application have deployed and it is using only one gb of memory and one cpu so how much is the remaining memory and remaining cpu here the remaining is 9 gb of memory 9 gb of memory and 9 cpu okay 9 cpu okay so out of 10 gb of memory and 10 cpu that phys this physical server has 1 gb and 1 cpu is used by my application and what is the remaining me memory and the cpu remaining memory and the cpu is 9 gb memory and 9 cpus so this is the resource wastage this is the first disadvantage if we use physical servers directly to deploy our application resource wastage what are resources here cpu and memory our application is using only one gb memory and one cpu but our physical server has 10 gb memory and 10 cpus what about remaining 9 gb memory and 9 cpus actually so this is the first disadvantage if you deploy your applications directly on the physical servers let me write that first disadvantage here what is that first disadvantage first disadvantage is resource resource uh, okay uh, yes o u r c e resource wastage this is going to be our first disadvantage resource wastage now what is the second disadvantage what is the second disadvantage now let me explain you. okay the second disadvantage if you if you deploy your application if you deploy your applications to the physical servers is suppose i have one more application suppose i have one more application this is another application this application name is application to app to something like this One second okay resource waste this first disadvantage
okay i want to deploy one i have one more application this is one more application this is app 2 okay this is one more application this is app 2 okay so this is application name is app 2 actually now i want to deploy this application to 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 this physical server in order to deploy this application to 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 the physical server i need to purchase one more physical server to run this application to okay so i need to purchase one more physical server to run this application to actually so if i purchase one more physical server if 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 you have multiple applications you need to purchase multiple physical servers so if i if i want to purchase multiple physical servers i need to pay huge cost if you deploy your applications on the physical server the second disadvantage is huge cost because if you have multiple applications you need to purchase multiple physical servers you need to purchase multiple physical servers to deploy multiple applications if you want to purchase multiple physical servers you need to have some money right so that's a huge cost will be there if you deploy your applications on the physical servers directly the second disadvantage that we are going to have if you deploy your applications on the physical server is huge cost huge cost it's huge e c o s t this is going to be my second disadvantage that's a huge cost now we have purchased okay the company to deploy multiple applications company has purchased multiple physical servers even though there is a cost they have spent that cost and purchased right after purchasing also there should be some space you need to allocate some space to deploy to, to install these physical servers you should continuously supply the power you need to continuous supply the power you should have separate team to to maintain these physical servers you need to uh, uh, have separate team to maintain these physical servers so here here if you if you have deployed the, your applications on the physical servers directly there will be a huge maintenance okay there will be a huge maintenance you need to uh, install this physical server in a separate room and you need to pass the power supply air conditioners your you need to supply and you need to have a separate team to monitor these physical servers and these are all the maintenance purpose so all these things if you deploy directly your applications on the physical server you need to have uh, you the third disadvantage is the huge maintenance okay you are going to have huge maintenance this is the third disadvantage that we are going to have if you deploy your applications on the physical servers okay the next disadvantage suppose suppose there is a problem as part of this physical server and this physical server has been crashed okay there is a problem with this physical server let's think there is a problem with this physical server and this physical server has been crashed okay so what happens to the internal application that is running on the physical server the application will also be crashed right because the server is crashed the application running on it will be crashed right so there is no mechanism of high availability that means even though the server is crashed there should be a mechanism to make our application available so that the users will not be affected users will not be who are using that application will not be affected so in in case of deploying our applications on the physical servers there is no high availability okay so that's a next disadvantage that we have as part of our deploying our applications on the physical servers the fourth disadvantage is no high availability now let me put something like this Fourth disadvantage is no high availability. Okay, this is the next disadvantage that we have. Like that, we have multiple, multiple disadvantages if you deploy your applications directly 
on the physical servers okay like that we have multiple disadvantages if you deploy your applications directly on the physical servers because of these disadvantages because of these disadvantages that we have you know in in deploying your applications on the physical servers we have virtualization evolved we have virtualization evolved let me show you how the virtualization and virtual servers looks like okay now here 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 also we are going to have our physical server this is going to be our physical server let me write a heading that is deploying our applications as part of the virtual servers second So I have a doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, why are we going for the another physical server for app two? When we have the remaining memory, line GB, the nine or the CPU, because oh, app you, one has taken. <clears throat> yes, you cannot deploy in case of physical servers. You cannot deploy multiple applications on the same server. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, deploying applications on virtual server servers and virtualization virtualization what is virtualization all these things we are going to see as part of this diagram okay now what is that okay so here also we are going to have physical server this is going to be our physical server this physical server is going to have some amount of cpu and some amount of memory let me write that as part of this okay so uh physical server okay so and uh, we are going to have let's take the same example 10 gb of memory and uh, 10 cpus okay in case of this physical server in, in case of virtualization and the virtual servers how the diagram looks like how the concept looks like actually now so this is going to be a physical server on this physical server you are going to have an operating system you are going to have an operating system okay as a layer something like this you are going to install not you means you it, it's the people who are uh, maintaining this physical server or installing this physical server so here this is the layer of operating system that you are going to install this is the operating system operating system okay so here this is operating system that you have installed on this operating system you are going to install a a, a virtualization tool okay virtualization tool there are many many virtualization tools available in the market okay vmware vmware is one of the virtualization tool okay so oracle virtual box is one of the virtualization tool okay you are going to install virtualization tool or the virtualization software anything is fine both refers to the same thing okay virtualization software okay you are going to install that virtualization software as part of this uh, on top of this operating system okay so let me have it here okay virtualization software okay hyper v is also one of the virtualization software okay virtualization virtualization software okay on top of the operating system you are going to install virtualization software you people might be using on your windows machine you people might have installed Oracle VirtualBox, right? So that's a virtualization software. 
okay so uh, that's a virtual agent software will be there on this physical server right on top of this what this what's the use of this virtualization software what is the use of this virtualization software so it will help us to divide entire physical server into multiple multiple servers okay it will help us virtualization software like hyper v hypervisor or whatever it is we are going to use it will help us to divide our entire physical server into multiple servers okay how it looks like as part of the diagram something like this you can create multiple servers as part of the same physical server something like this okay so this is first server we're going to have okay okay option this is fine okay the second uh like this we are going to have multiple servers okay uh this is a second server we are going to have something like this Okay, we are going to have a third server, something like this. Multiple servers will be there on the single physical servers. Single physical server, something like this. Okay, so these servers, which are there as part of the single physical servers are called virtual servers, virtual servers. You cannot, you can, you can see laptop, your laptop is a physical server. On top of that, you will be having your operating system. On top of your operating system, you will be installing Oracle VirtualBox, right? Oracle VirtualBox is a virtualization software. What, what that does for you, it, it will help you to create multiple machines on your laptop. Those machines are called virtual machines or the virtual servers. So in, in shortcut, we will be calling them as VMs. Okay. So we will be having something called VM. Okay. So VM represents the virtual machine. Okay. This is also VM. This is a second VM as part of this virtual machine. And this is going to be a third VM as part of this virtual machine. So this is the third VM that we have VM as part of this virtual machine. Right? So these are three different VMs are there as part of our physical server. Okay. Now, now, if I want to deploy multiple applications, if I want to deploy multiple applications, you can deploy. Suppose I have deployed this one, application one on this first VM. Okay. I am deploying application one on this first VM. I am deploying application two on this second VM. On this second VM. I am deploying application three on this third VM, something like this. Application three on this third vm something like this okay now here let me label them so that it will be clear for you so that uh once again this is application one okay so let me have a diagram something like this app one okay so this is going to be our app two app two and this is going to be our app three Right. So here, out of this 10 GB memory and 10 CPUs, this 10 GB memory and 10 CPUs will be divided across these three VMs. Okay, that means let me take 3 GB memory, memory and 3 CPUs, 3 CPU is there with this first VM, okay, is there with this first VM and 3 GB memory and 3 CPUs are there with the second VM. Okay. So, and we have 3 GB memory and 3 CPUs is there out of uh, in this third VM. Okay. So, here entire 10 GB and 10 CPUs uh, will be divided across 3 VMs. Okay. Across VMs, virtual machines as part of this physical machine. And the 1 GB and 1 CPU memory is used by the virtualization software or operating system. Just think like that. Okay. 
Now here, if I want to deploy multiple applications, I no need of purchasing multiple physical servers. I will only purchase one physical server. I will be using virtualization concept and on that one physical server only, I will be deploying multiple applications. If you are purchasing only one physical servers instead of multiple physical servers, you need to only spend less cost with respect to virtualization actually. So the huge cost disadvantage that we have if we directly deploy our applications on the physical server is gone with the virtualization co virtualization concept that we have. Huge cost is gone. If, the, if, if you are not buying multiple physical servers, you no need of maintaining multiple physical server you know you only maintain one physical server that also if you create this virtualization virtual machines as part of the cloud that one physical server also maintained by the aws people you know you're not doing anything there that means the disadvantage that we have if you deploy your application so directly on the physical server that is huge maintenance is gone as part of the virtualization as part of the virtualization now the next disadvantage no high availability in case of virtual machines or in case of cloud we have something called auto scaling group that will be spread across these vms that will be spread across this vm something like this that will be spread across these vms suppose if anything happened to any one of the machine any one of the virtual machine as part of this suppose this been crashed automatically this auto scaling group will be recreating the virtual machine automatically. It will deploy the application that is running on the application, like on that particular virtual machine, which has been crashed. Okay. So in case of virtualization or the cloud, we have, we have high availability, but the disadvantage that we have no high availability as part of the physical servers is gone in case of virtualization and the cloud actually you need to understand that the disadvantage is gone in place of this one okay the only disadvantage let's think other disadvantage that we have is resource wastage okay other disadvantage that we have is resource wastage this is a disadvantage that is that we have okay here in case of physical servers here suppose uh, suppose let's think let me do control Z actually. So yeah, let me. That's a huge, huge high availability is gone because of the auto scale groups that we have. Okay. So yeah. Now the only disadvantage that we have is the physical resource wastage. Suppose how this is still there as part of the virtualization. Let's 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 discuss. Okay. So here, out of this 10 GB memory and 10 CPUs. For this entire physical server, three GB memory and three CPUs were allocated to each virtual machine. Each virtual machine. Out of this three GB memory and three CPUs, which is allocated to each virtual machine, our application is only using one GB memory and one CPU. One GB memory and one CPU. One CPU. Okay. Suppose application one is using one GB memory and one CPU. What about remaining 2 GB memory, 2 CPUs that are available with this virtual machine? Okay. What about remaining 2 GB memory and 2 CPUs that are available with this virtual machine? Like that it happens with every virtual machine application deployed on every virtual machine. Suppose this application is also using this one. Okay. What about remaining 2 GB memory? and two CPUs and this application three is also using one GB memory and one CPUs and one CPU. What about remaining two GB memory and two CPU that is there with this virtual machine? So the resource wastage is still there, is still there as part of the, as part of the virtualization or the virtual servers. Okay. Virtualization or, or the virtual servers. Okay. So like that, this is one of the example, what are the disadvantages that we have in case of virtualization. Okay, so there are like that, we cannot monitor these applications properly in case of virtualization, whether they are running properly or not. Uh, like uh, whether 
how many requests are being received by this application how many successful responses are came out of this application so all the things we cannot monitor properly even though it is better than the physical server deploying applications on the physical server there are many disadvantages in case of virtualization one of the disadvantage out of them is resource wastage and the second disadvantage is the clear monitoring of our applications clear monitoring of our applications on the physical deployed on the virtual server actually something like this so there are some disadvantages like that uh, in case of virtual virtualization also because of those disadvantages if you deploy your applications on the virtualization okay what are the two disadvantages let's write them actually disadvantages of deploying applications on virtual machines this disadvantages of deploying applications on virtual Yeah. First disadvantage. What is the first disadvantage that we have? Resource wastage is still there as part of the virtualization. Also. You can see that very clearly uh, from the diagram, right? So now let me click on enter. And the first disadvantage that we have is resource wastage. Okay, the second disadvantage that we have no clear monitoring of the application. So no, not only these disadvantages, like we have multiple disadvantages. We have just taken an example so that we can move further with the doctor. Okay, so uh, monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. No proper log collection. That is also uh, one of the disadvantages. No proper, no proper monitoring of applications. Something like this. Okay, so so let's let's stick to this. Only uh, these are the two disadvantages that we have because of the disadvantages that we have with the deploying of our applications on the virtual machines. A Docker is evolved. A Docker is evolved. How the Docker diagram looks like now? Let me file new and uh, save it. Okay, so let me save it with uh, initial something like this on the desktop and let me save it. Okay, now how the Docker diagram looks like. Now let me draw that diagram. Okay, in the case of Docker also, we are going to have physical server. This is going to be a physical server. Or for this physical server, as an example, we have taken what is the example we have taken? This is going to be our physical server. This physical server is having 10 CPUs and 10 GB of memory, right? So let me put that one here as part of this. Okay, so 10 GB memory and 10 CP, CPU. Okay, CPU. These are the these are the resources from initially we are taking as an example, right? Now, on this physical server, we are going to have our operating system. It's same diagram previously, but yeah, a few changes there, but yeah, that's fine. Okay, this is the operating system that we are going to have. Okay, so this is going to be our operating 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 system operating system. Okay, uh, here this is going to be our operating system. Now on this operating system we are going to have virtualization virtualization software whatever the virtualization software it is we will be using that virtualization software something like this okay so this is virtualization software virtualization software now on top of this virtualization software what's the diagram we have seen we will be having multiple virtual servers let me take only one virtual server because yeah uh, i need to explain docker also right so in this diagram so i am going to take one a virtual server on on top of this physical server so like that we will be having multiple virtual server let me put dot 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 something like this dot, 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 dot. we'll be having multiple 
uh, virtual servers as part of this physical server and this is been called as vm right virtual machine okay in aws terminology we also call this as ec2 machine or the instance okay there are multiple names for this virtual machine virtual server virtual machine instance ec2 machine all these things refers to the same thing okay in this virtual machine we are going to have an operating system again something like this it's a guest operating system we call it as okay so okay so let me have this operating system guest operating system okay on top of this operating system we are going to install docker engine we are going to install docker engine okay let me put something like this here we're going to install docker engine okay so this is going to be a docker engine Okay, this is going to be a docker engine that is going to be installed like we need to install this okay we need to install this docker engine how to install i'm going to show you but yeah we are going to install this docker engine on top of this now with this docker engine what is the advantage of installing this docker engine you can run multiple multiple applications on this server this is one application these applications are called containers we are going to see the terminology also this is app one what is the terminology what is the container what is the image we are going to see but yeah as of now just remove just remember this these are applications that are app one and this is going to be our app two something like this okay and this is going to be our something like let me take this only two okay this is going to be our app two entire resource is properly consumed app two something like this suppose this 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 virtual machine we are in the previous example what this virtual machine has three cpus and three uh, three gb memory right so let me write that three cpus three three gb memory and uh, three cpus cpu we have okay so if the application one is using one cpu and one gb memory and application two can use one cpu and one gb memory and the remaining one cpu and one gb memory out of this virtual machine can be used by this docker engine and ghost operating system like that okay you can you can consume entire resource properly you need to you can consume entire resource properly as part of these docker containers these are something called containers in case of docker terminology we are going to see the terminology but yeah as of now this is how our docker setup will be we are going to have a physical server and on top of that we are going to have an operating system on top of that virtual agent software will be there on top of that we are going to create virtual machine and you are going to uh, you are going to have guest operating system inside that virtual machine and on top of the guest operating system you are going to install docker engine and on top of the docker engine you are going to deploy multiple applications on top of this docker engine inside the virtual machine okay the entire resource is properly consumed and you can better monitor your applications how to monitor your applications using Prometheus and Grafana, we have a dedicated session for that. But now you can, with the help of Docker Engine, you can properly monitor your applications by instrumenting them or whatever it is. Okay, so you can properly monitor your application. We are going to clearly see that in the future. But yeah, this is how you are going to deploy your applications inside the virtual machines with the help of Docker Engine. Okay, so this is the reason why the Docker is evolved for proper resource utilization, proper monitoring, proper logging. So there are many, many reasons because of the evolution of microservices in the industry. Okay, what are microservices we are going to see? But yeah, so because of these reasons, the Docker has been evolved as part of this uh, 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 IT world actually. So that's I think that's how the Docker is evolved. So what, what, like we have first seen, what are the disadvantages if we deploy your applications on the virtual machines because of the disadvantages that we have on the virtual machines sorry because of what happens to the what are the disadvantages that we have 
if you deploy your applications on the physical servers. Because of those disadvantages, we, we have virtualization and virtual servers in order to deploy those applications. And we have also seen different disadvantages that we have if we deploy our applications on the virtual servers. Because of the disadvantages, if we deploy our applications on the virtual servers, we have Docker, okay? With the Docker, we have also disadvantages. Because of those, we will be moving to Kubernetes with the as a container orchestration technology, okay? So we are learning in such a manner. Before learning something, we need to learn what are the disadvantages that we have with the previous technology, okay? So that you will be understanding a new technology like Docker uh, very clearly actually. So that's a, how you need to uh, think. This is how the Docker has been evolved. And uh, if you have any questions, you can ask any questions, please. So what are the disadvantages of Docker in, uh, engine? Here, if the application has been crashed, in case of Docker, it's, it's not an entire virtual machine crashed. It's not an entire physical machine crashed, but your application has been crashed. Docker does not have any uh, mechanism to, regen, to recreate, redeploy this application. This is one disadvantage. And the second disadvantage. If your application, suppose there is a sale in your website, there is a sale in your application. If your application is getting so much amount of traffic, so many people are accessing your application, Docker does not have scaling capability. You, it cannot scale your application to, 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 to accept more, much number of traffic. Okay, this is a second disadvantage with the Docker. So like that, we have multiple disadvantages with the Docker as well. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a thing. Did you get that point? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay, someone asked me yesterday, uh, out of these three, I did not remember the name, uh, that uh, you people has come from non IT background and you asked me that whether you, I will be able to understand properly. How do you feel? Anyone who is that? Uh, sure. This is Jagdish here. Okay. Is that you asked yesterday? Yeah. Yes. Is that understandable for you? Yeah. Yeah. No, no I got a clear picture. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Each and every concept will be like that in our course. And, uh, yeah, we will be seeing that. And please remember, your batch is going to be shifted to 9.30 a.m. morning from 10.30. Uh, okay, so uh, please remember that. And please go ahead and register for the course. And uh, uh, tomorrow is the last demo class that we are going to have. And uh, before closing this today's class, one thing I want to say is go to the hub.docker.com. There is a website called hub.docker.com. Go to the new tab and go to the website called hub.docker.com. In this hub.docker.com, you need to create an account. What is this hub.docker.com? We are going to see in the future, but as of now, create an account as part of this hub.docker.com and also create an account as part of the AWS. I'm going to show how to create an account, but yeah, just if you, if you know already how to create an account in AWS, just create an account in AWS. If not, I will be showing tomorrow, no problem. But yeah, here it's very simple. Creating an account in the hub.docker.com. Click on, go to the hub.docker.com and click on sign up. And uh, it will ask you to enter your email address and the username and the password and click on sign up. That's it, your account is created. Or you can also uh, use this continue with Google or continue with GitHub. That means OAuth. To, you can also use these options to log in. That's fine. That's your option. Okay. That's that's uh, whatever you want to do, you can do. Create, enter your email, username and password and click on sign up. Your account will be created. Once the account is created, you just click on sign in and you will be able to uh, enter into your account. Let me, this is my, you just enter your email address with, with which you have created your account and click on continue and enter your password, click on continue, and you will be logged in to your hub.docker.com account. This is useful for you to store your Docker images. So uh, I'll be saying what is the Docker images in the future, but yeah, that's the thing. 
uh, you need to do in that manner. Okay. So yeah. No, I think uh, Shiva in this course do we require any coding skills? No, 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 no. no. Not any coding skills are required. No scripting skills are required. You only require the YAML syntax. How to write a YAML files? It's not a coding. It's not a scripting. It's a declarative syntax. You need to understand that. Also, we have we have a dedicated session for that actually. Yeah. So these are the different images that I have in my account. Okay, so you can just create an account and uh, uh, that's a that's a thing actually. Okay, which I'm clicking on sign out. Okay, so please create an account as part of this hub.docker.com. Tomorrow we are going to see how to create an account as part of uh, AWS and how to create a virtual machine, how to work with that. Okay, so that's the class for today. Thanks for joining. I'll meet you in the next class. That is tomorrow. So on the one. One small thing, like how would you define the virtual machine in your terms? We learned it long back, uh, so like we are getting, I'm getting confused. So can you define like what is a virtual machine in your terms? Virtual machine is a machine. It's a server only. It is virtually okay. located. You can interact with that virtual machine. Okay, you can view that virtual machine, but you cannot touch and feel that virtual machine. You can deploy your applications on that virtual machine, but you cannot you cannot uh, go and feel like you see. Suppose your laptop is a virtual machine. Your laptop is a virtual machine. Sorry, sorry. Your laptop is a physical machine, which which you can touch. Your laptop is a physical machine, which you can touch. On top of this physical machine, you might have installed Oracle Virtual Box. Most of the people use this Oracle Virtual Box to create virtual machines. People install the Oracle virtual box on top of this laptop that is called virtualization software. On top of that virtualization software, we can create multiple machines. Those are called virtual machines. Virtual machines are not physically available, but they are virtually available where you can deploy your applications on them actually. So that's the thing. Okay. So they are virtually located machines actually. Okay. I remember like I learned uh, as imaginary. Yeah, it's also imaginary. That's also right word to spell out. Okay. Okay, that's the thing. If I connect with any example, okay, let me think of the example. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'll tell you. So the, they are virtually located as of now. Also. Okay, so that's the thing. On the same physical server. Okay. okay. That's the class for today. I'll meet you in the next class at the same time, 10.30. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Please go ahead and visit for the course. Thank you. Bye.